All right, well, let's call the meeting to order. It's the Board of Public Works, uh, Wednesday, February 12th, 2014. Um, first, for your consideration, the minutes of the January 22nd meeting, the hearing. Oh. Uh, moves approved. It's not it a hearing. hearing. Oh. hearing. I didn't catch that. It was a meeting. Sorry. So right away we have a <laughs> <laughs> an amendment. It's gonna be a long night. <laughs> oh, we on TV? Uh, any? Uh, would someone like to move that we accept these minutes? Move, move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank Great. you. Uh, could I have a motion to take old business number two out of order? Dave Valletta is here to uh, walk us. I think Jim's gonna walk on providing support. Would you, would you like to make a public comment before we race past I'd, that part of the meeting? I'd like to make them as they come along, if I may. Um, okay. See how that goes. We'll try that. Um, okay. Um, so that's... So all right. All in favor of taking number two landfill out of order? Aye. 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 Great. Uh, this big uh, panel size uh, sheet of paper in front of you is a... Uh, is a fiscal year 2014 mid-year budget um, summary. Um, I'm going to walk you through some of the key points. There's kind of a lot of numbers here, and I apologize for not getting this in front of you um, by email in advance of the meeting. But I think we can cover some of the uh, some of the key points. So, as you can see, the basic lay of the land here with the spreadsheet is um, on the left side. There's a description of the of the, the budget item, and as you get on the page, it's operation and maintenance line items, capital line items, personnel cost, employee benefit costs, um, other direct costs, and then at the very bottom is um, the revenue projections that were made for the transfer station. <coughs> as you start to go from left to right, um, the first column of numbers was the value appropriated in the budget that the board approved. The next column to the right from there is the mid-year budget number, where we stand as of today. And then the column on the right is the projected end of the fiscal year budget for each of the line items. And then we have a few notes on the far right, which describes how we made our assumptions for the projections. So, can, can I just double check the mid-year is where we are today. today. Expenses so to date. So it's not a six month figure, it's a <coughs> seven and a couple. Yeah, yeah, and a couple. Yeah, I think it is a six month. It's a six figure. Six, six months. months. It was in mean, January 3rd. <coughs> Our fiscal year starts on July 1st? It does. So it ends December 31st. December 31st. December 31st. Okay. So, so, so it's six December months. 31st. Six months. And, and before we leave discussing the columns, Jim, yep. <coughs> projected is projected. Is our estimate of where we're going to end. Based so, on what so for example, looking at the totals in that first group, operations and maintenance, mm -hmm. we appropriated 320,000, yep. but we expect, to, we expect to only spend 211. That is true. Okay. And I'm just looking at the first line where it says we appropriated 2,000. We spent 2710, but we're projected at 2000. And that's because the electric, meet, electric meters so run backwards. So we need, we need to sort out the electric meters between the landfill and the transfer stations. Somehow they all got lumped together. And zero electricity has been charged to the landfill. So we need to separate those meters out and my projection is that the transfer stations alone will actually not spend more than 2000 over the course of the year. So that's why it looks odd. Bill's paid for the wrong budget needs to be moved. Okay. <coughs> Can I go? Mm -hmm. Go, yeah. sir. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to point out a couple of things here and I'm, we're going to draw a couple of conclusions and then we'll try to answer some questions and, and move from there. So as, as uh, Terry Dapley pointed out, um, the low, there are lower expenses projected. We've projected 211,000 under the operation and maintenance budget versus 320 um, that was appropriated. Um, as you go down the list, um, personnel costs are a little bit uh, under budget. As you can see, 163,000 versus 181. 
Um, some of the other numbers, employee benefits are spot on, direct costs are spot on, and then the sum of the expenses is 482000 and change, you can see. The bottom part of the uh, spreadsheet is revenue, and uh, I'll just point out the total revenue projected, and I'll circle back in a second on this. The total revenue projected is about 420000 So at this point, we're projecting roughly a $62,000 loss in the fund as a whole. And um, when you look at the numbers, what we basically have determined is that, um, well, let me point out a couple of other things. What we basically determined is that we've, we've sold fewer vehicle permits this year, so we have fewer customers, and we have sold fewer bags than was projected, as you would expect. And this, this represents itself in a couple of ways on the table. If you go up to the top under trash removal, we had $140,000 appropriated for MSW and bulky waste disposal. You see that? Under operation Where? and maintenance. Under trash removal, oh. under operation and maintenance. 529003. Yeah, that's true. 529003. We appropriated $140,000. We're projecting about $88,000 of expenses there. That represents about 62% of what the projected budget was. Okay. If you go all the way back down to the bottom and you look at the bag sales, we had $339,000 projected in revenue. We're projecting about $186,000 in change in revenue. That represents about 55% of the revenue that we had projected. So basically the conclusion there is that we're operating at about a little more than half uh, of the activity that we projected would happen um, with the transfer station this year. So the deficit as a whole can mainly be attributed to um, the drop in revenue from the vehicle permits, which is estimated in the vicinity of $27,000, and the, the, uh, the change, the reduction in bag sales, which is about $152,000, somewhere in that vicinity. Um, and I think that's really the meat of it, um, as you can see. Loss activity, loss of some customers. And there's other little minor points, but um, I think that's, those are the main, the main issues. And while you digest that, I will say that we're in the middle of preparing the budget for the next fiscal year, and as you can imagine, when we look at these numbers and then we project the next fiscal year, there is also uh, a deficit <coughs> that we're trying to work through at the moment. So do you have a plan for the deficit? We have thoughts about the deficit. Um, the thoughts are you can reduce your expenses or you can raise your revenues. Rose laughing. She says, that's amazing. It's <laughs> 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 amazing. Has, uh, has come up with some creative ways. So what we've, t what we've talked about internally, just with staff, we haven't really gone beyond Ned and myself, David and Ann Marie talking about these things, that um, it's likely that if you <coughs> raise the vehicle permit fee or the, the bag fee, that you may lose additional customers. Um, but you'll also note that the vehicle permit fee and fees for bags that people are paying in other communities exceed what the city charges people to use our system. In fact, there was an article in the Gazette three or four weeks ago about Belchertown. Their, their annual sticker for vehicles is like $100. So we're 25, they're 100. So you can see so in terms of raising revenue, it would be vehicle permits. You could raise the bag fees, but that may have a detrimental effect overall. So you look at the other side of the equation. If you can't raise the revenue, how do you get additional revenue in to provide the services that are being provided? And the other way to do that would be to consider um, either an infusion of money from the general fund. So we've talked about ways that that might happen um, or could happen to offset some of the operational costs or uh, possibly um, an overall uh, 
conversion of the operation of transfer station to a general fund activity. So we haven't really talked about any of these things with the mayor or the finance director, but you can see that either you need an infusion of money, a reduction in what the uh, expenses are, or an increase in revenue. Thank you. Okay. Do we allow non-Northampton residents to use the transportation as it is now? No. That would seem like one thing we could consider. We'd like to have more, and it might be convenient for some people. Not more than just a few, but not a big number. I mean, we could handle it. But the plan here was to handle a lot more trash. Yeah, I mean, this, you're in direct competition with Dusson Route 10, so if you live in East Hampton and you have the opportunity of dropping trash off without buying a vehicle permit sticker, or you can pay the city of Northampton 25 bucks to come in, and we're going to make you buy our bags, and you can drop off a barrel of junk in whatever bag you want. Well, we're more likely to pick up business from Williamsburg. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. People coming down. Yeah. I mean, these are, these are small towns. We'd need to check their fees to see how competitive we are with the other towns. But it doesn't cost anything to open it up to them, except to announce it. Well, they must, they might ensure that they have a system where they do collection of their own communities. Right, but, it's well, like but it's an opportunity <coughs> for the consumer to choose. I think part of the problem moving forward is that you could try that, but you can't balance a budget on that. I agree with that. And then you get into business aspects like marketing, cost of advertising. I mean, you could put in at something in the paper about doing that, but but it, it might not be enough to to draw the additional uh, business. My question is just to clarify. Um, are you done? Yeah. yeah. Um, so you're wanting to clearly not have the solid waste enterprise fund have a deficit from from uh, transfer station work. That is correct. Okay. So, um, but what do you think are the possibilities of setting this up as part of, and when you're saying general fund, you're talking about city general fund. That is correct. So, do you think there's much of a chance besides uh, publicizing the fact that you're asking, I mean, that, that, that the general fund will can the city council will consider contributing money from the general fund to solid waste <coughs> removal? We do not know. That's a discussion that we'll probably have with the mayor. Um, the bottom line is decisions need to be made about mm -hmm. services that are offered mm -hmm. and a way to fund them and present a budget that's balanced. Mm -hmm. At the I moment, agree. right, so yeah. at the moment we have services right. um, and we have talked about ways to move some of the expenses to the general fund in, in a in a way that would help balance the budget, but clearly it's a change in the way um, that the department was directed to operate this system, which was make it a fee-based system that doesn't lose any money. Okay. Well, <coughs> meanwhile, we can't we can't exacerbate the um, the deficit. I mean, it stands at 12,000 now. We can't let it balloon up to 62,000. Well, we could this year because of other monies. This, the transfer station budget, we have divided it out from other solid waste enterprise fund monetary activities for the purposes of this discussion. Because the transfer station is supposed to stand on its own legs. If you looked at the whole budget, it would be hard for you to know that it's not standing on its own legs, and it's only through all the work David's put in to developing the summary that we know that it's not it's not in making ends meet. So there would be some money to cover this year's deficit, but moving forward, uh, it would be not great to move ahead in a, in a deficit type of fashion. Chris. Um. So basically what I see is, as people use it less, uh, I, let, me, let me go back. People are using it less because, we think, because it costs more. Is that 
reasonable sort of assumption? I would say. Okay. Um, and I don't expect an answer at this moment, but I think it would be important for us to, as we move forward, have a better understanding of what options they're adopting as an alternative. The, the options, I, Whoever. I, I, could, I, yeah. could, tell you, I yeah. could tell you what the options are. On the low end, the people that want to keep the trash cost as tiny as possible are probably going to Route 10 because they don't have a vehicle permit sticker and it's cheaper to get rid of a bag of trash up there. So the people that are trying to squeeze every last dime out of the money they spend are going there. The people that are more affluent and that can afford to not have to deal with the hassles of the traffic and bring in their stuff on the back of their car and have everything get all smelly, they're calling pedal people or they're calling do so or they're calling one of the curbside haulers to come to their house and take the stuff away. So you've got, you've got people that can afford it, that have someone come and take it away, and you've got the people that are really struggling who may be going over there. So my guess is that we're losing some customers. At both ends. I that would be my guess. There's never been a viable alternative until do so opened up. Mm -hmm. yes. And when you see on the South Street list serve, you're on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, people occasionally will break into practically song and dance about do so. They almost have a concierge service that they trot over to the car, they take it for you. Or, I mean, I was at my neighbor's house for dinner last Sunday, and one of the first things one of the people there told me was. Geez, I went over to that do so transfer station, got rid of some stuff. It was really amazing. I'm not working today. Can I make a comment? Yes. In looking at this, the income from recycling is reduced to the amount of the deficit. It's about sixty thousand dollars short per year. Yeah, I can explain that. The numbers well, the numbers aren't what they appear there because of um, the fact that some of the revenue um, for electronics, mattresses, Freon, and tires and things are actually shown in the sticker column because of the way that we, the way that they've been accounted for. But if you look at the actual, the actual revenue to, to, to what you're you're getting to, the MRF revenues that we get from Springfield are on, they're right on budget with what we had anticipated. So we're not seeing a reduction there. What we are seeing is a reduction in income from things like mattresses because we had assumed more activity with mat things like mattresses and tires and things like that. So we'd assumed there's just less activity. So just look, look at mattresses for a second. We'd assumed more disposal cost and more revenue from those because we charge a fee to take them and we pay to get rid of them. If you look up um, at mattresses, you can see that we're projecting about $3,200 worth of expenses on mattresses. The corresponding revenue, which would sort of be a recycling revenue from those items, um, is also down quite a bit. So it wouldn't be possible for Dick to glean this um, accurately because because of the way the numbers are mixed a little bit. But the recycling numbers are um, pretty on with what we were expecting. In terms of um, getting revenue that covers the cost of, of handling the material, plus, plus the profit that we make from bringing stuff to Springfield. <coughs> and you know, we're anticipating that the Springfield MRF Revenues may end up going down in the future, so if you, yeah. That was going to be a question. Sure, I'm sorry. Like, can we anticipate the recycling uh, revenues changing dramatically one way or the other for the future? No. At point, one point, it was suggested that we market our own paper because the MRF is the MRF is just taking the paper and taking it to the, the mills, mm -hmm. and the price of paper is still pretty high. Mm -hmm. Has anybody pursued that avenue? We haven't. We do. I do think it's a good idea, though. I mean, you see, you see these truckloads of bales coming out of Walmart, yeah. and Smith College is yeah. marketing their paper direct yeah. to the mills. Yeah, Gary. I was going to say that, that Smith College has, I think, eight cardboard balers, and they do have to separate paper from cardboard. And, and the, the, the balers, they do get uh, quite a bit of money for that material. We can look into that. They may, there might be strings at the MRF or whatever, but, and it's a good point. Dick has brought it up before, and I think you know, we're in agreement that it's got more value. Um, it's got, probably has more value if we can find a way to deal with it separately. I do think it's important to have a discussion with the mayor because the mayor was very much an instigator before he was the mayor and when he was on the South West to have us go in the direction of not being, not being in the trash business. 
So if this is an ultimate direction that he doesn't want, that in your discussions you find out that, that we don't want to go into deficit, we don't want to take the money out of general fund, I think we need to acknowledge those factors and get, it, get the issue on the table. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, it's even if we raise sticker fees, for example, it wouldn't help us until next summer. That's correct. So, have you begun really looking at the issue of how do we keep the twelve thousand dollars budget from ballooning up to sixty-two? Um, not in detail. There's one way we. There's one way that we could do it um, temporarily, and that would be to delay. A thirty-three thousand dollar expenditure to restock on bags. So, based on minimum purchase requirements for the bags, we what we end up buying for the bags, and we have to place a minimum order, ends up resulting in a, a purchase of uh, bags that would last us more than a year. So, if you were to delay that to the next fiscal year, you would theoretically save thirty-three dollars in paper on the books for money that wasn't spent, but. Eventually, if the intention is to keep the system moving, you have to buy those bags. See, it seems like a reasonable thing to hold off on until the conversation with the mayor occurs. Absolutely. I mean, you, you don't want to buy years worth of bags if somebody all of a sudden decides you're going to pull the plug in the whole thing or whatever. You want to keep all those options open, right? What are the estimated um, number of days left of, on the bags? Would you say it's six months, or would you say it's more like eight months? Or? It's probably four or five months. We have we have a full, the large bag uh, inventory is close to bringing us to the end of the fiscal year. The medium and small bags will carry us well beyond the fiscal year. Are we still using the old large bags? Yeah, we're just using those. Should be used up towards the end of this fiscal year. So we have at least, you know, Four months. Right. And we do the bags, we have minimum orders too, of $16,000 for each size bag. <coughs> so, just so you're aware of that. So, it, it, would it be safe to say that we won't see a budget deficit growing too much beyond where it is now? Maybe it'll go to 20 or something, but we're not going to see 61, $62,000 in a few months. If we didn't buy the small, not to. Right. Be uh, to, to manage inappropriately, but if we, I just want to be clear in my mind, if we didn't buy minimum, the medium and small, we might save thirty-two thousand dollars in this budget. In this budget, in this budget yes. So it would be you're still going to end up with a thirty, twenty, twenty high twenty thousand dollar deficit <coughs> unless other changes are made. I mean, these were true. We made reasonable assumptions in the projections. <clears throat> so unless unless there's something drastic that changes, you know, you're going to end up in the, in, if we delay the, the purchase of the bags, you'll end up in the high 20s in the deficit. <clears throat> and go ahead. Well, no, I'm just going to ask what the turnaround time that we looked into to marketing on papers and trying to get some evidence from the paper, the, the time to we take to get that as started as a project more than six months? It would take a little while. I mean, my sense, although I don't know much about it, is that we would then have to have two separate paper collections, one for cardboard and one for paper. And well, <coughs> not necessarily. Not necessarily. Right. So we would have we have to evaluate the terms of the MRF contract to see if we're obligated to bring everything. And that might be the case. Dick won't know one way or another. But we need to, we need to review our obligations under the contract. Mm -hmm. And then we would need to find um, locations where we could bring paper and cardboard only as we collect it and then see what the value is. And that might save, you know, it might save some, might increase the revenue some, um, but definitely has more value as Dick has indicated. Part of the problem with some of this is that uh, we don't have a full-time <coughs> recycling coordinator anymore. So we're straight out in engineering and we can look at, you know, we can look into these things. I'm not sure how long it would take to make a few phone calls. I don't think it would take that long to see if that it would be feasible to get something in place like that. Uh, actually, MJ. Yeah, I, my question is, um, with the reduction in the number of people who bought stickers and the reduction in the number of bags that have been sold, have we reduced any staffing? No. So um, we still have the, the transfer stations open the same number of hours with the same staffing as no. we projected? Have we looked at that at all? No, we have not. 
It's busy. On Saturdays it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's busy. I mean, yeah, it's busy. So it's not intuitively obvious that <coughs> you can take a look and just tell people to go home. No, I know that, home. but staffing is yeah. usually a big part of the budget. So and, and, yeah. and you recall as well that when we closed Glendale, we felt there would be some increase in activity here. Mm -hmm. So even if even if we just maintain the same level of activity on some level, mm -hmm. you know, it would be busy. But it's a good point. I mean, that, those would be the things that you'd look at, right? Can you change hours or do staff or try to find a way to cut the losses a little bit as time goes on? Mm -hmm. But we just finished this analysis, so we haven't really, we're just trying to tell you where we are. We haven't come up with the solutions yet. <coughs> were you surprised by it? I'm not surprised by much. <laughs> David? Do we need bailers, or is that just an optional way of handling it? We don't need bailers. We can use the compaction equipment we have. Right. And then my other question was, did we does this budget reflect savings on having just a part-time recycling coordinator? Yes. So if we were to go, so that's something that still has a, probably we need to think about for next year if that we go back to what the status is for that staff position. It's a factor. Could we look forward to um, your analysis uh, in a couple of weeks? What the solutions to raise like fifty thousand bucks? We'll be heroes. I'd love that opportunity. <laughs> or or trim the sales uh, slightly. Sure. Uh, sure. You know, it's just. Is it, is I, I mean, it doesn't have to be a foregone conclusion that we run up a thirty thousand dollar deficit. Understood. Um, I mean, we don't want to wait a month or two months to think about it. What about, is it too soon for the discussion with the mayor to occur also? No, I think that could go concurrently. Okay. I, doesn't that seem? I think those are two good outcomes. Sure. Thank you. I should have better news than that. It is what it is. But there's better news further on the agenda, fortunately for you. <laughs> <laughs> on the other side of the sheet. Oh, no. <coughs> All right, well, thank you for doing that. Thank you, David. You're able to go to work. And I'll bet. We can make them a copy. So I don't care. But you can keep that. I don't think one's coming tonight. So. No, it's not. I'm just spitballing here, but I'll bet number one under old business is why you're here. Yep. So Doug is here to help us with number one. Could I have a motion to take that up, Dave? Mm -hmm. Second. And all favor? Thank you. Uh, Stormark. Thanks, Doug. Thank you. Uh, just a little background. Um, we had the uh, another one of the ward meetings on Monday, Ward Seven. Um, Typical attendance, 30 people or so, um, generally a, a friendly crowd. I think, um, again, the questions were procedural, they were you know, just, just clarification types of questions, not a lot of uh, hand-wringing about the overall intent of this thing. Um, the EDLU, which is the Economic and Land Use Subcommittee of the State Council, has uh, passed their endorsement. I don't know if it's a f actually an endorsement, but when the City Council received the proposal for the ordinance, they referred it back to Ordinance, Adlu, and the Youth Commission. Youth Commission has endorsed the proposal. Adlu has forwarded forwarded their comments to the Ordinance Committee. The <coughs> Ordinance Committee took their first look at it on Monday. They're going to do another look at it on the 25th of this month, and that's going to be uh, considered to be the hearing for the City Council on the proposed, uh, proposed stormwater enterprise. I said 21st? 25th. Um, 6.30, Council Chambers. Um, 
So the next thing that they're looking for is uh, Jesse Adams and Ryan O'Donnell oh, have proposed some amendments to the uh, proposal that we submitted to the City Council. And the Ordinance Committee would like to hear from the Board of Public Works as far as these proposed amendments. And that's a document with the uh, corrections that, you, that you've got here. So there's two. I have two, yeah. The, okay. one, the, the one, the one, the, the red one, I guess, is what we're going to okay. start with. So, <clears throat> Ordinance Committee is basically planning to move through their process and report to the council at large before the end of this month. That will clear the decks for the, the full city council to consider this issue in March, which will be terrific because I think I mentioned at the last meeting there was a big meeting at City Hall with the assessor, the treasurer, uh, Susan Wright, the finance director, uh, tax collector, all of the departments within the city administration who might have anything to do with the uh, this enterprise fund. And it was decided that the most practical solution to setting up the budgets that uh, they're mentioning that they're working on their budgets is the budgets are being prepared as if this will be successful. It's easier to switch gears and quickly take this enterprise fund out of their calculations than it is to act like it's not going to happen and then scramble to make it happen. Um, but in any event, <coughs> there's some pressure to get a decision from the city council. And so that's good news that they're going to work on it in March. <coughs> yes. So is Doug going to take us through proposed changes? Or what? Jim may. Okay, cool. Do you want to do that? I have do. It, have it yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah. So we'll start. Uh, so the red, the one with the red at the top is where we're starting. Um, what we did is we checked, we tracked the changes that Councilor Adams and Councilor O'Donnell had suggested, and then we added comments in the right-hand margin for things that we can we can talk about. So if you go to page two, um, this is uh, in section 280-4 under definitions. Um, Councilor Adams had suggested the inclusion of a definition for direct cost. And you can see the track changes, direct cost shall mean cost incurred in the operation and maintenance of the stormwater and flood control utility. Um, he had a similar uh, definition for indirect cost at the bottom of page two. Indirect cost shall mean benefits, uh, insurance, and cost paid by the city of Northampton um, separately that allocable to the uh, direct costs of stormwater and flood control. So in the, in the comments, um, what we have said is that um, well, let me, let me step back. The, con the concern of the counselor is that um, revenues that will be raised by the new utility may somehow be used for city activity right. not directly related to um, the purpose of the utility. So the, the goal of some of the changes was to try to sort of tighten up the financial aspects of the management of the utility. So our comment um, is, is sort of a question under JL5. It says, has has the use of this definition been compared to Mass General Law Chapter 44 and Department of Revenue guidance that governs enterprise funds? So the meaning of that basically is that um, the Department of Revenue tightly regulates um, the implementation and use of enterprise funds, and including auditing of revenues and expenditures within those funds. So I think if you were to talk to the finance director in a, at City Hall, it, she would say, you know, these, the enterprise funds are, are tightly regulated and audited and it provides, it provides that needed level of protection from misuse of um, spending money within an enterprise fund. So we're basically suggesting, um, given that the enterprise funds need to be operated in accordance with the DOI requirements and the, and the laws, is it really necessary to add these definitions? So we're asking the council to, to consider that. And, and whether they're actually necessary. If I could just add a comment, the, the issue is it doesn't say anything about debt service. So if you want to be nitpicky, you'd say, well, wait, hey, you can't pay off bonds with this money. That's, that's not listed here. Construction costs are not listed here. Engineering and design services are not listed here. So once Jesse 
tried to began to go down the road of specifying how it could be spent, we have to make sure that it's inclusive. Right. So it's parsing it's parsing the, the determination of a, the definition of cost in, in a way that might be deemed restrictive and unnecessary. Okay. Yes. Um, I'm unfamiliar with the way uh, local ordinances are drafted. Um, at the federal level, there are there are two pieces of language that go along with every piece of legislation. One is the legislative language, which is what I would equate this to be. Um, and the other is um, a sort of uh, a narrative that that is drafted by uh, the Committee of Jurisdiction that, that dictates its intent. Okay. Um, it would be sort of the comment portion of, of this thing here. And I, I don't, again, having never looked at city ordinances, I don't know if there's a, a, an analogous sort of thing. But the, the, the advantage is, is that you have, um, in what we call the, uh, the conference language, uh, the ability to articulate what your intent was when you did this thing. Right. Yeah, it's a good point. We don't have that. Okay. Is it not covered under purpose, which is on the prior page? No, his, his point is that when you make a change to a proposed ordinance, usually you describe why you want the change. Right. So he's asking, do we have something like that from Jesse Adams and from uh, Council O'Donnell? And we don't. For don't instance, really, we don't know their intent. For instance, if you're looking at the V22 Osprey, and you and you say we're going to restrict the funding on this piece of let on this program to 250 million this year. Um, if you go to this other document, what it says is members of the committee are increasingly concerned about the viability of this program. I mean, it, it, it's literally a narrative that that allows you when you go back to look at it and say. Um, this is how we did what we did. That there were good reasons for it. You know, um, it, it, it's it's a really useful tool. Um, so you're talking about the specific changes that they're Yeah, the and why, and yeah. and why, you know. I mean, because what we've got here is a really good narrative about you know what the concerns are of all the people involved. Um, that won't be reflected in the final document. So what we would, what, what our goal here ultimately, at least from our end, is to have a document that we can send back to the counselors that have their track changes and then some version of these comments, depending on what the board wants to say, that goes back to them that describes the board's intent for commenting. So as far as these two definitions go, um, we're <coughs> question, I guess we're asking the question about whether they're necessary and then if they feel like they're necessary, we have provided some suggested language which might broaden the definitions to make it perhaps less um, problematic in the future. So if you look under um, comment four, um, in quotes, we're suggesting if they want to keep the language of the definition for direct cost to change it to say, direct cost shall mean the costs incurred by providing stormwater and flood control services as defined below. And then when you go to the definitions, of stormwater services, there's a reference to debt service, capital expenses, other things that Terry had mentioned a minute ago. Bottom of page three. Bottom of page three. So that, um, you know, that broadens the definition in a way that might make more sense. So these are more suggestions, I guess, for the counselors to consider than anyway. By the same token, uh, on page three, comment JL9 um, has a similar change for indirect costs, but we add that um, there are costs for <coughs> stormwater and flood control services as defined below. So again, just an attempt to tie it to something broader. What about you? I mean, you're concerned about the enumeration. Uh, oh, I, no, I, I I would be concerned if we leave it untouched gotcha. the way Jesse wrote it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I've spoken with Jesse, Jim and I have worked on this, Doug has worked on this, 
I've spoken with Jesse and Ryan. Uh, Jesse was in a training all day today. He couldn't respond uh, in, in any detail. He's, he's not like stuck on exactly the way it was worded. Um, maybe there's a way we, if, 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 the, if this board is approximately comfortable with this, maybe there's room to approve it tentatively pending any tweaks. Uh, that occur from further con conversations with the city council. <coughs> we, our deadline is really the 25th. Um, we need to have this all ship shape for the ordinance committee to consider. That's before our next board meeting. Mm -hmm. It is, unfortunately, so. You should try to move on tonight. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. So the next one. On um, page four, um, uh, Council Adams has suggested um, some wordsmithing on here to say that um, the annual budget for stormwater management and flood control services shall be based upon recommendation, recommendations of the Board of Public Works and shall be approved by a majority vote of the City Council. And then he, uh, he deletes some words there and adds, the city council will set the annual budget and the month that will be sufficient, et cetera. Um, so we don't have any comment on that. That's uh, you know a majority vote. Uh, we feel that um, it's sort of an incidental insertion because Ned has pointed out that would be their standard practice anyway for approval of the budget. So and we don't have any comment on it. The top of page five, um, there's uh, there's some uh, language changes relative to what happens to the budget on year six. Uh, beginning in the sixth year, the revenue shall be adjusted based on recommendations of the Board of Public Works, subject to the approval of City Council as described above in Section A. Revenue raised by the utility shall not exceed two million dollars per year, plus plus the cost of inflation as determined by the Federal Bureau of Labor Statistics Consumer Price Index without at least six votes of the City Council. So the way this works is the first five years of the budget, the budget cannot exceed $2 million. On the sixth year, the budget could be $2 million plus the CPI. And if it's more than that, you need six votes of the Council to approve that budget. We don't have any, staff didn't have any particular comments about that. Um, it's a plan. Yeah, I mean, we certainly have no issue with it. And everyone agrees that if we needed more, something extraordinary probably is underway. Uh, there's been a real problem at the pump station. There's been a flood. Something has occurred, and, uh, you know, the city council will probably be willing to act. Chris? Yeah, I was going to say that the uh, the $2 million threshold, um, uh, exceeding it would be something that elected officials should decide rather than, than, than us. So I'd be comfortable with that. Okay. We'll keep moving down at, uh, down on item G. Um, they're suggesting striking the language, uh, calculations of bills for each property shall be determined by the Department of Public Works. Um, we don't have any real issue with that. Um, the authority established in 280-1 basically says that um, the utility known as the Stormwater and Flood Control Utility um, would be under the day-to-day -day, uh, supervision of Director of Public Works and the General Supervision of the Board of Public Works. So by establishing that, you know, it follows that we would be the ones to prepare the bills. So we didn't really have an issue with, with that deletion. Um, he's proposing additional language under G to replace that, which is sort of non-related, but it reads, after calculating the billing rate per square foot of hydraulic area in subsection B, the Board of Public Works will establish a unit rate for each of the three classes of small residential properties in accord with subsection C. So subsection C was um, ref referencing um, the three tiers of small residential properties that were proposed um, for the purposes of developing standard billing rates. Um, we don't really have any problem with uh, the intent, what we believe to be the intent of this language. The only issue that we have is the term unit rate is not 
wouldn't be the correct term. The correct term would be standard fee. So it's not a unit rate that would be established for each uh, category of, of residential bill. It would be the standard fee, the $61 or the whatever the fee was that we've been discussing for each category. So we were okay with it with the exception of um, th with that change, replacing the unit rate with standard fee. And that's reflected in comment 13. How would you feel about standardized fee? You are the chairman of the Board of Public Works. <laughs> Uh, standardized would be fine. And then volume, it, it's, like it, it's, it's not standard forever, it's standardized year by year. Standardized would be good. I always feel a little unprepared if I don't have my dictionary to look up these things. That is not good. So if you go to page six, and you see two thirds of the way down, um, Councilor Adams is proposing deletion of receipts from the stormwater and flood control utility fee shall be used for the following purposes. Deleting that and replacing it with the stormwater and flood control utility fee shall only be used for direct and indirect costs of the utility including. So we tied, you know, this basically ties back to the Councilor's suggestion that direct and indirect costs be, be defined above. Um, I think if the changes to those definitions were made as we suggested, it would be, uh, it might be a little more accurate. W and wouldn't require necessarily any changes to what he's proposed in this particular line. Okay. On page seven, on section 280-9, um, the section on exemptions, um, Council Adams is proposing deletion of uh, item B2, which reads public or private land with a permanent agricultural preservation restriction or conservation restriction held by the city and or state or other permanently protected undeveloped land as documented by recorded land at the Hampshire County Registry of Deeds approved by the Board of Public Works. So there was an inclusion in the ordinance that uh, these properties I just described would be exempt from receiving a fee. And Council Adams is um, proposing the deletion of the exemption for those properties. Again, uh, staff doesn't have a comment that's clearly a policy decision one way or another. Um, if the board wants to, <coughs> if you have a comment, if you want, if you have any comment, we can include something there. Um, there was some uh, gentleman at the, from the Ag Commission at the meeting Monday night who was making some points relative to this, suggesting that it was important to keep an exemption for us. Yes. Oh, I'm just curious uh, how significant <coughs> having those fees included or excluded, what, what are we talking about? Uh, $17,000. Okay. Not significant. Yeah. It's less than 1%. Exactly. I had talked to Mr. Jasky after the meeting and suggested that it, he get in touch with his counselor and the counselors at large to, uh, to let his opinion be known about this particular issue. Um, he was raising the points in, the, in that public forum, which is great, so everyone's aware of the issues, but it's important that, I mean, obviously, Councilor Adams has proposed this change. It would be good for him to hear from the people that it's impacting as well. That, that's in there because Wayne Fyden was arguing for it. Um, he felt he needed every tool available and as he tries to get, encourage people to sign their land over to permanent restriction. So in a way, we don't have a dog in this fight. Mm -hmm. I was just curious. Well, except that there's a precedent that we set that we do, do allow some sort of exemptions for food causes or community support causes. And with one in there, you do a toehold come down more right. or later and say, what about this? <coughs> well, the uh, task force was, uh, would, would you agree? The task force thought everyone should get a bill. However, yeah, although to be honest with you, 
I don't think we were sufficiently smart about these two particular right. exemptions. Okay. Um, I think if we, I think we would have found a way for them to pay, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I think we would have acknowledged the, the fact that there is um, uh, a good reason to have an incentive for people to do this kind of thing and, and how to balance that out. Mm -hmm. um, this was this was a category. I mean, because I, I spent a lot of time thinking about the exemption stuff, and this was a category. These were two categories of property that I, I, I had absolutely no understanding of. So um, uh, I think I think I think the task force at that point would have had to you know beg ignorance and say let's 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 move forward. Well, is there an appetite for the board to have any comment on this? Well, only in that uh, it seems like these two uses would be terrific places to see um, the entities that control those lands work towards getting credits, because I would imagine that those, the impacts that they have, I mean, if you take the fee away from agriculturally protected land, <coughs> there's no incentive for the farmers to participate in any of the credit that you can get credit for some of the mm -hmm. fee by doing good things to support mm -hmm. the end goal. So that, that would be my argument, yeah. is to leave it in and encourage them strongly to take a look at reducing the, the cash impact mm -hmm. by paying attention to the credits. When I talked to Mr. Jasky after the meeting on Monday, um, he admitted that um, it's somewhat of a philosophical argument because in Terry's presentation he had described what the bills would be and um, the bills aren't that great, you know, on any basis. And, and even even Richard suggested it's it's most philosophical than anything. He says it's not a ton of money, but you know, what is in his mind, it's like what is the decision that is correct, what is right, and personally, you know, based on your own opinion. So. The the maximum bill down in the meadows would be eighty dollars a year. Okay. So and they use the credit and incentive <coughs> policy. I think we get it down so that we're paying more. No. I think the maximum incentive would be 50% of whatever that is. Yeah, in this case, it's 20. But um, uh, the whole thing was constructed, I'm blanking on uh, Mr. Hydraulic Acreage. Um, Dan. Dan. Yeah, Dan deliberately constructed it so that his hope was that the, the building down in the meadows would be so minor that it, it wouldn't cause strenuous objection. Well, and, and I believe he was successful. Yeah. No, I think so. I mean, this is more of a philosophical argument, so I actually support taking the exemption out. All right, so we, we can endorse this. Well, I know how I feel. Okay. But I, I can't speak to the whole board, but I would recommend we <coughs> support Jesse's recommendation to remove it. Well, let's see how it goes, because people might peel apart on different parts of this, but mm -hmm. maybe at the end, if we can broadly support it, great, and if, if we need to look at it one at a time. Okay. So Section 280-10 is, uh, is the discussion of credits. Um, Councilor O'Donnell, should I wait? Yeah. We have two other people taping this meeting. <laughs> we have Mimi, who we're so happy to see she's making me a stock or something over there. 280-10 um, uh, is the discussion of credits. Um, Councilor O'Donnell, if you go to the top of the page, the top of the next page, um, is had inserted a date um, by which the credit policy would be adopted by the board. So he's saying by July 1st, 2014, Board of Public Works would adopt a credit policy. And then he added um, the, uh, the line that states, the city council shall have the authority to modify the credit policy at any time. And then he added that the credit policy should be available for inspection by the public at the DPW and on the city website. All items which uh, seem perfectly reasonable to us, we didn't really have any comments on them. Uh, as you slide down page 8, down to item F, um, Councillor Adams had proposed language comparable to what uh, Councillor O'Donnell had suggested, and it reads, 
stormwater management, flood control, utility fee credit policy, as developed, maintained, and from time to time amended by the Department of Public Works and approved by the Board of Public Works may be amended at any time by the City Council. So clearly there's a desire in the Council to dabble in credits in the future if they want to do so. And again, it's, you know, happy to have them do that. The credits come out of the $2 million budget or are the fees tweaked to make up for the credits? Uh, the budget would be established and implemented and then if people applied for credits, it would, it would result in a reduction of the revenue for that year because we don't know in advance what the impact would be. Although we have done some very ballpark order of magnitude type of, types of calculations to figure out for large properties that would apply for credit, that the value of those credits, if everybody that could apply for one, applied for one, would be somewhere in the order of fifty to 75000 if everybody did it and got approved for, for that amount. So it would be that amount of reduction in the revenue for, for a year, somewhere in there. Which could be made up in the succeeding years. It could, once you know what it is. <coughs> okay. Uh, the last page on, uh, on page 10, um, Councilor O'Donnell has proposed um, Section 280-13, Public Reports, um, which states the Board of Public Works will make an annual presentation to the City Council providing information relating to the work and projects financed by the Stormwater and Flood Control Utility in the previous year, including to the extent practicable and account of expenditures from the Stormwater Management and Flood Control account and projected future expenditures. The Board will also present this information in a written report accessible on the City website. Um, again, um, we had no comment on it, perfectly reasonable to report on activity with city money. Problem with that. So the first thing the Ordinance Committee is looking for is our comments or endorsement of what Jim has just walked us through. Any discussion? Does anyone feel like it'd be better to look at them one at a time, or would you be comfortable just with a blanket endorsement? I'm comfortable with the blanket. Comfortable? Director. Could I have a comfortable um, okay, uh, I motion? I, I move that we accept these brilliant comments that, that um, Mr. Nowinski made. Second. 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 And um, are you comfortable allowing him to finish working out the language on that first one with Jesse? I think that's a good idea. Okay, great. So all in favor of endorsing these comments with that one proviso? Well, uh, did we come to get, did we discuss that as a board about the exemption? Because that, I, I think I'm, I'm hearing Rose enthusiasm for deleting that paragraph, and you, you endorse deleting that paragraph. Yes, I, yes, yes. That's why I was asking, do you want to go through these one, like number one, okay, number two, vote, number three, vote, or do a blanket endorsement of these? Oh, it's pretty close to that, right? Yeah, oh. I think that that's Mo's, ro that's Rose motion. That's Mo's motion. <laughs> <laughs> She's tricky that way. <coughs> so we have a, a, a motion and do we have a second? Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor of endorsing these amendments as proposed by Jesse and Ryan? Aye. Aye. Great. Now the next thing we have <coughs> is the staff has come up with a few little tweaks and adjustments. Uh, you, you read this, every time you read it, you think, oh, this would be a better word. This would be a clearer <coughs> way to say that. So Jim has second thing and now this would be in the category of suggestions from us to the ordinance committee okay uh, Doug has spent a great amount of time deliberating the details uh, as of I and, and we put our collective heads together and come up with these suggestions that would like to both consider moving forward um, to the council uh, and I'll, I'll walk you through these, and if I misspeak, Doug will correct me, as he so often does. 
um, on page two, um, at the uh, near the top under definitions, um, the definition for credit, we would like to have credits defined as credit means a reduction in the amount of stormwater and flood control utility fee charged to a particular property period. And we'd like to take all the other extenuating discussion um, and remove that from the definition. Uh, and the comment that we have there is that a broader, simpler definition of credit is proposed so that the credit policy can include financial need based and senior credits not included in the current definition. So the current definition is a little too restrictive. Um, by the time you start to work on the actual credit policy, um, by having a restrictive definition of credit limits what you can do within the policy itself. So one a nice simple definition there. Yes, of course. Um, I, I'd like to support that. I think that um, in the broad discussion about credits and exemptions, that these are really ultimately policy decisions um, and that we should not tie the hands of uh, the city council in, in their ability to alter these in any way, shape, or form moving forward. So uh, the broader the better as far as I'm concerned. Um, I, 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 with the caveat that I'm sure there are going to be specifics where I'm going to be very pained to do so, but, but as far as broad general definitions, I think that that's, that that's the appropriate approach. Great. Great. On page three, uh, at the very top, um, we're proposing in the definition for non-residential property to strike the word improved. So it reads non-residential property means property that is not residential property as defined and there's a long list of properties um, that describes that. Um, a non-residential property may be, un may be an unimproved property. So that was the reason for deleting that. As you move down the page, sort of in the purpley color, um, we're proposing a definition for pervious surface. Um, earlier on, a few weeks ago, Councilor Adams had, had suggested that a definition for pervious surface be added. And you know we felt it was appropriate to do that. The, the term pervious surface is used within the ordinance itself. We're proposing language that reads like this. Pervious surface means those areas that allow the unimpeded infiltration of stormwater into the soil. Common pervious surfaces include, but are not limited to, lawn areas, forest land, agricultural land, meadows, and other undeveloped land. In determining utility fee calculations, all land on a parcel of property not defined as impervious land will be considered to be pervious. So as you'll recall, the determination of the fee on any property is based on dividing the property in its entirety to a certain amount that's impervious and a certain amount that's pervious. Um, so this definition, we think, covers that pretty well. As we move on to page five, <coughs> in the middle of the page under letter E, um, this is, might be the most substantial comment that we have in terms of uh, changes to the ordinance. What we're proposing to do essentially is you'll see in the middle the, uh, the blue highlighted language that we're striking. We're, we're proposing to remove um, how the tiers are defined for small residential property. So originally, the ordinance read that properties, there would be three groups of small residential properties. Properties with less than 2,000 feet, square feet of impervious area. Properties with greater than or equal to 2,000 square feet and less than 4,000 square feet of impervious area. And properties with greater than or equal to 4,000 square feet. And what we know based on looking at the data is that those numbers of 2,000 and 4,000 may not be the numbers that we want to use once we have the actual data in. So these were very based on very preliminary analysis. So what we're proposing to change is the underlying language, which reads, small residential properties shall be divided into three groups based on the amount of impervious area. These groups will be sized such that 25% of properties will be in the smallest category. 50% of properties will be in the middle category, and 25% of properties will be in the largest category. Those percentages actually reflect what we've been talking <coughs> about. Um, but rather than specify the 2,000 to 4,000, gotcha. we're just specifying the percentage of properties that will fall in each category. Yeah. 
we think it's a pretty clean way of doing it and making it more accurate. So you would move the uh, the threshold up or down 2,000, 1,500, 2,500 so that it conformed with this idea of, yeah, yeah. It, it turns out as we get, yeah. it turns out as we get more accurate data that in order to get 25% of the houses to fall into the small category, yeah. we would have to set the bar at around uh, 2,500 square feet. Okay, cool. Uh, but as we get even more accurate data, it may turn out that the correct number is 2430. Yeah. 2430. Yeah. 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 Yep, right. agreed. Okay. We added a little bit of clarifying language a little bit further down that the bill for each group shall be calculated by using, <coughs> we, we're striking the word based on, and inserted the words by using the average impervious and pervious areas of properties within each group and then we're proposing to add the language that the Board of Public Works shall determine the range of impervious area used for defining each group. So that just states how it would, how that would work um, practically. So you make the list of all the properties, you find the median, put the middle 50 percent in the middle category and then you put the far edges in 25 and 25 right. and then you define, you look at what those cutoffs are in terms of square footage, and that's that's the category. That's it. Yeah. You want to do it for us when we start? Sounds like you're getting <laughs> good now. Doug said he could use a hand with it. Um, we'll do it with a sidewalk chalk in front of our houses, okay? okay. <laughs> um, on page six, uh, midway down, uh, section 280 8, purposes of the fund. We're proposing some uh, the insertion of some language here, which would in, which would read as follows: Receipts from the stormwater and flood control utility fee shall be used for stormwater management and flood control services as defined in Section 280-4, and also includes the following purposes. Now, the reason that we did this is that um, this section in A through A through L defines certain purposes of the utility. That's the reason for this section. But um, the services are also defined in section 280-8, I'm sorry, 280-4 at the beginning of the document. So by adding this language simply links the description of the services from the two separate sections together. So they're, so they're linked and one section isn't, um, isn't viewed independently from the other. Jim, I have a question. Um, I'm looking at this. For example, we've got that uh, runaway brook south downstream from Zanti Beach. Where would that fall here? Do we have a, or the the retaining wall out on the river road and leaves? Well, under the under the, so if you go to page three, um, stormwater management systems and facilities are defined as the stormwater management systems and facilities shall mean those natural and man-made channels. So in the case okay. of Sandy Beach, the natural channel would be would be one that... So it doesn't necessarily fall, but it would show up also in 280-8. Exactly. Okay. So we think it makes sense to link them. They weren't, they weren't linked. There'd be other ways to fix it, but this is a, the easiest way to do it, I think. Okay. Um, if you go to page 8, On item D, um, we're in section. Let me too fast here. We're in section 280-10, which is the credit section. So D, D states that in order to obtain a credit, the property owner must make application to the city on forms provided by the Department of Public Works for such purpose. And we're proposing the deletion of the forms and replacing forms with application. So we want it to read the application to be fully completed in accordance with the procedures outlined in the stormwater management flood control utility credit policy. And you'll see in the the comment in the in the uh, column to the right is that the, applic the application consists of, of forms and required technical information. So we didn't want this to be a little misleading so that people thought maybe they just need to complete a form and get a credit. It's a little more complicated than that. So we just felt it was clear to do that. So just move, move down into section 280-11, item B. Um, this is regarding um, 
records of billing and it says that stormwater and flood control utility bills shall be managed by the Department of Public Works for collection. Um, we're proposing the director of public works be stricken and be replaced by the collector in the next sentence and I'll, I'll read it so that it would read the collector shall keep records of all paid and unpaid stormwater utility bills and maintain financial records for the utility. Um, we don't actually maintain those records here at Public Works. It would be done by the collector's office. <coughs> we had a, had a discussion with, with Anne Marie about that and using the word collector there would make it more accurate. Could I suggest that Northampton collect? That office must have a more, more accurate name. Um, City of Northampton Collector's sure. Office, or is it, is it the tax collector? Well, that, that's the thing. I'm looking at this, and it's not tax collector. Tax collector. I think that's the, the, the City of Northampton Tax Collector. Yeah, wh whatever the actual name of the office is, because I have to admit, I'm looking at this thinking, is this someone here in the office? Is this no a new position? Yeah, I. Okay, we'll make it. We'll make it legal. I think the word collector exists in other locations and we'll make that change. Um, yeah, right, and I just pointed out it's, it appears in B. So we'll make that, we'll make that more accurate. And that, those are really the sum of uh, the things that uh, the Doug and I have talked about. Yeah, and again, would you be comfortable with an all embracing hug sort of uh, motion here, or? Yes, I would. Can make a motion? I make a motion that we embrace this little hug. Okay. <laughs> Do I have to write that down? <laughs> I make a motion that we accept the staff recommendations for the ordinance. I second that. Any discussion? All in favor of hugging these um, adjustments? <laughs> Aye. 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 Great, thank you. Uh, now, do you want to also go through, this, this is just FYI for your amusement during the week. <laughs> so we have, uh, Doug has been working pretty diligently on this, I'll give him most of the credit for, uh, for what's good, what's bad, I'll, I'll take the credit for it. Uh, he's been working on uh, adding meat, sort of meat to the bones of the policy, <coughs> um, and it's really built on the subcommittee work that the Board of Public Works have done and providing description of the types of uh, credits and incentives that would be good to consider and the, the percentages and um, basically we've added uh, more description for each one of those. Doug has started to put together uh, an application form that's attached as Appendix A, so we just ask that you try to take a read through this and we will about to hear comments or we can talk about the next meeting. Okay, great. Thank you, Doug. So, so next, uh, set street acceptance hearing date for Boggy Meadow Road, i.e. Cook Avenue, for them out. And also number two and number, no, no, so we should take number one and two together. So we, we, have, we need two of those street acceptance hearings. Where is Bridgeview Road? Bridgeview Road is just before Loudville Road off of Route 66 just before the West Hampton Town Line. The development was put in by uh, Todd well, Sewer, so the builders. Uh, yeah. It's a cul-de-sac dead end. Oh, it's like up the top of the hill? It is. Yeah. Is this right based on, on a, on a petition? Or? Yes, petition received. <clears throat> yeah, so they're kind of in different parts of the city. <laughs> well, I'm just wondering, you know, if, if we took them, uh, what do you think about doing them before one of these meetings? I think mm. that'd be wonderful. Yeah, I think it's good. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if we did that, just to con do that connection with the third item of the agenda, would we defer that third item of the agenda to another meeting? Or yeah, I'm thinking so two different meetings. this might be three meetings. Well, in other words, one. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, it could be good. What do you think of that? I'm fine with that. So, with uh, Ridgeview, you're going to need at least a 10 minute travel time to get back to a meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm hoping I might actually 
Go <laughs> into the meeting and come back. Um, that yeah. would definitely change my arrival time. Three ma 83 Mansus Road Street, how long has that been on the dock? Docket. Um, not long. We, no, we just got it last okay. week. So there's no hurry. Yeah. So our next meeting is. February 26. 26. Yeah. Um, shall we pick one? Uh, we could do Cook Avenue around, we think, 10 of 5? Or 445, I mean, would that be? Yeah, we have to do certified letters on these. How big are they? Um, this one is going to be the same size as um, Cook Avenue was, so that's 70 people need to be notified. Okay, 70? Well, not quite, no, there wouldn't be, but you got the Pine Ted development. There's probably the houses up there, you're probably going to be notifying 60 of those abutters. So, do you want to. And they have to be 10 days ahead? What we could do. You could the do claims, the claims hearing for Massasoit next time, and that would give you a month to plenty of time. Now. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Massasoit next week. You go with that? Sure. Okay. So so we we'll, we'll do Massasoit on the 26th, <coughs> and then just what everybody you're comfortable with. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
for the residential <laughs> food waste collection program to alternative recycling and the amount not to exceed $24,000. Mm -hmm. This is for our food waste compost and services that we offer here at the transfer station. Um, we had no bids from just two other firms or three other firms. We had no bids from Valley, Triple T, and Waste Management, and Alternative Recycling was the only bid. It was $11 per cart uh, for pickup and delivery to a composting facility, and um, it's not to exceed $24,000. Questions or comments? How does it compare with the current cost? <coughs> uh, current cost is eight fifty a cart, <coughs> so it went up. Mm -hmm. How big is a cart? I don't really know what it looks like. They're ninety gallon totes, ninety six oh, okay. gallon totes. All right. um, they're on wheels. Do they need special equipment to pick those things? A good back. Really, that's how they do it. I don't know how they, they're, they're picking them up personally. Must be a lot of weight. This is food waste, right? Mm -hmm. That could be really heavy. It's it's yeah. Yes, Jim. What's the period of the contract and does it obligate us in any way beyond this fiscal year? No. Services are provided as we request. And is this, looking at the budget, is this the food waste line item cost? It is. So in this year's budget, we had a budget of 10000 projecting that it was going to be, it's going to end up as 14000 Man, you people love the free service. Mm -hmm. You're integrating all of the data. I like this. <laughs> um, well, apparently that that demand is actually growing. Like people are actually doing it. Just are you cool. looking at data? No, no. I mean, <laughs> actually using the uh, the, uh, the centralized composting. Oh, I thought you were talking about the data. Uh -huh. I'm out of the data book. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So almost all in favor? Pardon me. That's almost five hundred dollars a week. Yes. A lot of Is it a lot of food waste? How did you calculate that? You just divide the total number by the number of weeks? Yeah. Yeah, 12. Well, it's, it's a not to exceed contract. There's no guarantee that we're going to spend all that money in the course of a year. And the amount that varies, we have data, I don't believe. Um, but the, the amount that we haul out depends on the season, obviously, the types of materials that we can have. But it's not, uh, I mean, it adds up, obviously. I'm talking about $25,000 contract, so but not to exceed. So all in favor. Mm -hmm. And what was it this year? It was about $14,000. There you go. Not to exceed contract. Doesn't mean we'll spend it all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially now that we're tightening our belt. I know, I know. <laughs> Do all the, all the uh, okay, <laughs> so all in favor of approving this contract for handling residential food waste. Aye. 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 Thank you. I'm just thinking that the North Hampton High School Environmental Club just started an expanded composting program. Oh, okay. Oh. I'd like to say that Smith College recently ran their numbers, and I don't know if Roger's aware of this or not, but they got they're, they're above seven percent recycling, and it's the vast majority of the change. It was very hard to get above forty percent. It's food. Mm -hmm. They really embraced it and have done it. Okay, uh, next contract for timber harvesting to Joseph Adams in the amount of 18,130 uh, credit. Did oh. we miss a change order? Oh, sorry, I did it. I had it myself. Change order number two to contract 353-11 to GCA Geo Environmental for dam repairs, middle and lower Roberts Meadow Dam evaluation in the amount of zero. It's a time extension until the end of this year. Second. It's a contract we have with GZA for um, preparation of phase two alternatives analysis to repair the Middle Roberts and Lower Roberts Dam. Those studies are actually done, but the contract also includes preparation of operation and maintenance manuals for each of the dams. Those are in the process of being completed. Um, the budget on this contract was 136800 We have 
about $9,000 in change left to expend probably will be done in the next, uh, I would say in the next couple of months. So it's just a time extension that would allow them to build to the, uh, to the extent of the contract. Any other any questions? All in favor of extending this contract? Aye. Uh, <coughs> now, contract for timber harvest to Joseph Adams, and he, uh, and he will, for this he will pay us $18,134, and money will go into the Water Enterprise Fund. So we had two bidders on this, uh, Allard Brothers and Joseph Adams. Allard Brothers bid 9000 for the work to be done. There's four stands that are being done under this cutting. Uh, there are two stands here, up at the Rhine Reservoir, another stand here at Rhine Reservoir, and then a stand down here at the Mountain Street Reservoir. Uh, basically, according to the RFP, that there's approximately 218 million board feet of green certified standing timber, mainly white pine, red pine, and hemlock, with approximately 452 cords of green certified firewood and softwood pulp. Uh, that are marked and uh, to be taken down as part of this contract. And do we get some kind of a a bond or an assurance? I mean, do they pay in advance or? They do. They have a payment in advance at 30, contract signing. Thirty percent at contract signing and seventy percent within one hundred and eighty days of the contract signing or at the start of work. So, it's likely that we'll be paid before they cut. Yeah. And that's what happened with Alice Brothers and the work that's being done now. We had the money from them well in advance of them starting the work. Okay, great. Any questions or comments about this? All in favor of approving this contract for timber harvest? Aye. 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 Change order number one to contract 18-14 for the phase four landfill closure construction for Jay Bates and Son in the amount of $5,256. And as well, there will be a contract extension to the end of this year, and this is money coming from the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund. There were it's a lot of paper shuffling. I'm trying to convey some information to the board. We are we are riveted on this one. We are earlier. There were two items uh, covered in this change order with Bates Construction related to closure of the landfill. Um, there were items that came up during the course of the work uh, that we requested that they do, and I'll describe them for you because I'm really interested. Um, the first item was uh, was uh, relocating a four-inch uh, gas line, an existing four-inch gas line from gas well nine to an to an existing Muche cleanout in phase four area, area was removed during construction and then reinstalled above the cap surface. The reinstallation was needed to provide vacuum to the Leche cleanout. It wasn't shown on the original drawings, so it wasn't included in the contract. We asked them to do it. They did that item for $2,882.50. Um, the second item on this change order was um, work related to a per uh, perimeter stone line swale. The perimeter stone line swale along the toe of the slope between the phase three cap, which is an older section of the landfill, and the landfill gas flare area required additional fill and stone in order to provide more slope and volume to accommodate surface runoff from the exterior slope adjacent to the flare. So there was some additional work that was required in the vicinity of the flare that wasn't shown um, on the construction plans. They took care of this item for us for $2,374. So the total value of the change order is $5,256.50. A lot of work. Very wordy, BJ. She's asking me not to be so wordy. I'm working. Just you know. saying. <laughs> <laughs> so any comments about these two uh, change orders? All in favor of approving them? Aye. 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 Next, change order number one to contract 168-14 for the Bradford Street Pump Station Force Main Replacement to Borges Construction in the amount of 27884 and that money will come from the Sewer Enterprise Fund. It would come from it. Second. There's also two items uh, that are combined into this change order. Um, with Borges. The first one 
uh, involve replacement of 80 linear feet of 8 inch asbestos cement gravity sewer pipe, um, including handling and disposal of, of, the, uh, of the AC pipe. Uh, Borges is requesting uh, $13,901.18 for out of scope work to replace that 80 feet of pipe. Um, a segment of existing 8 inch uh, asbestos cement gravity <coughs> sewer was damaged during excavation for installation of the new sewer force main. The existing gravity sewer and the new force main were very in close proximity to one another in an area that suffered damage. Um, there were additionally uh, painted roadway markings provided to indicate the location of the existing sewer provided somewhat inaccurate location in this area. Um, we talked to our field engineer and inspector at, at the time and uh, indicated that uh, the contractor was using acceptable care during excavation in this area. Um, but the damage occurred uh, despite of that. So um, we're recommending uh, payment of that item for the replacement of the, the sewer line that was damaged. The second item under this change order involved the purchase of additional rigid foam installation for, for the force main pipe. Um, Borders Construction is requesting $13,992.71 for additional rigid pipe insulation above the quantity anticipated um, within the contract um, and also a time extension to receive and install the insulation on the pipe and to complete the installation and redirection of wastewater flow to the new force main. Um, the quantity of pre-insulated, so the justification, the quantity of pre-insulated pipe um, as shown in the drawings was not sufficient due to the need um, because of shallow, the shallow depth of the force main in order so we needed more, we basically needed more insulated pipe than we planned. And in order to buy that pipe, it cost more money and it cost $13,983 in additional expenditures to cover that. Um, so um, staff believe those are fine. They were uh, reviewed and approved by Wood and Carr and the engineering team. A lot of words, sir. Any questions about that? Comments? All in favor of approving this change order? Aye. 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 Uh, next, we have a, a late breaking change order. Uh, number two, for contract 258 13, the Northeast Survey Consultants for land surveying services re related to the private ways in the amount of 26200 And this is kind of a combo. It's coming out of uh, one third water, one third sewer, one third general fund. So basically what we have is we have um, the first original contract that you signed was for $23,800, which was a city council appropriation to help uh, finance the survey of private ways. Subsequently, you voted to use Water and Sewer Enterprise Fund to help fund this endeavor. In addition, the city also, through a council order, appropriated another $26,200. So there was a total set aside of $100,000 for the survey work to be done. Uh, we currently have uh, 34 private ways that we're looking at. Uh, the field work has been completed by the survey on 26 of these ways. We have plans completed, uh, which are paper that the staff has reviewed and looked at and sent back to um, uh, uh, the final comment to Dan Staz, the owner of the business, uh, Northeast Survey. So 19 of those plans are back. And we've sent forward 12 total to Alan Seawall for his review and title research so we can produce final mylars. And three of these ways, uh, final mylars have been uh, received by us, but we're waiting for the order of taking from Alan Seawall. What's a mylar? Mylar is a type of medium that the, it's printed on. Right, and re that's what's recorded at the registry of deeds. Gotcha. So we're making good progress. We have expended a little over $19,000 so far with Northeast Survey. And we're coming to a point that we're going to be running out of money, so I took the next allocation we had to get us to $50,000. I'm really hoping the $50,000 will be enough to complete the project as far as the survey services go. And generally speaking, money that we give them would be connected to delivered. I actually have a question, um, which maybe I should have asked Ned before, but just occurred to me as we talked about the source of funding for this. If water's, if money's coming from the water and sewer enterprise funds, should that money for survey only be spent on private ways that are going to become public ways and then utilities in them? That would be an appropriate question. 
and the answer would be that would make sense. So I don't know if there's a way we can manage expenditures of it sounds money. Sounds like the sort of thing you'd have to. There's only a few streets that don't have public utilities, like uh, <coughs> Bottoms Road does not have any public utilities in it. Um, majority of these private ways have water and sewer in them. The vast majority do. Chris? Um, but there's nothing to say that um, in each case the funding has to be one-third, one-third, one-third. Um, money's fungible, right? I mean, you what you're really saying is you're putting all the money into a single pot coming from three different sources and then paying it out as needed in each direction. So there's really not necessarily a connection between source and outcome. When I code a bill, there's three different or four different sources I'm pulling money from to pay the bill. Oh, so you actually, on the bill, there are three yes. different, okay, never mind. But you, you could, could code, code it. it such that yeah. the one-third allocated to water or sewer shows up on the streets that... Mm -hmm. Yeah. You would want to know that as a water rate payer. I know I would. I wouldn't want my water rate payer money going to Bottoms Road if they don't have a public water supply. Just to choose an example. Just an example. Yeah. For example. Mm -hmm. Good point. So that sounds doable? Yeah. Okay. However, that Bottoms Road does generate quite a bit of stormwater runoff. <laughs> so maybe we should hold off on that survey until after July 1. <coughs> Another good thought. Okay. Um, so, do we have a motion on this one? I make a motion for, that we approve this change order. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor of authorizing this contract to Northeast Survey Consultants? Aye. Aye. I think uh, private ways is last, and anything further about private ways? Kind of cover anything. Okay, great. Got a nice little summary sheet. That was cool. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, really. Like the like Well, if you look above, it was revised on two, uh, February 10th, which is the O. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> Not quite Valentine's Day. <laughs> I was just going to say, who do you think is going to win? <laughs> You don't know how much fun we had putting this table together in engineering. <laughs> you can imagine. I can. Takes a little bit of time. Yeah. That's great. Um, okay, so Gary, anything that you'd like to talk about? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, Chris. No, I'm good. Almost done. Thank you. One more to sign, Chris. Yeah, I'm not going. <laughs> um, just wanted to let the board know that uh, BJ had sent everybody a flyer on a forest walk on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So Nicole had done one of these a few weeks ago, which was sort of a pre-harvest forest walk to walk around the forester and have him explain what was going to be done. Mm -hmm. Now that a lot of that work has been done, the purpose of this one is to walk around with, with our forester and have him explain what was done and why it was done and what it looks like now. It should be great. Um, I went on the first one, and Mike is really, really good at explaining the types of things that we're doing in the watershed. We had, uh, we must have had about 25 or 30 people in the first walk, so. Is there a flyer that's online? Because I'd like, I, I yeah. can't go, but I'd love to post it to, to my Facebook page. Yeah. I, I got one electronically, but oh. I, I didn't, I don't know if it's got a, like, it, it's already up somewhere. It's, it might be, a, there might be a link to it on the blog. I think Let me see if I can. I, yeah. think, I think Nicole put a link to it. On yeah. The blog. Okay. Cool. But it should be fun. You're you welcome to yeah. come. That's Saturday. Saturday yeah. at noon. At ten, from ten to noon, and uh, the group will meet at the West Whitley Chapel. There, there's plenty of parking on Williamsburg Road. You can drop a car there. And, uh, it'll be fun. Is this a snowshoe trip? It will be that day. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> The logger is out there with a lot of equipment going up and down some of the roads, so we don't think it will be. So we think a lot of the snow that we get will be packed down. If it's not, we won't go out and have hot cocoa. 
Yeah, I'm going to bring some mosquito holes first. To go. Are we talking about this Saturday or yeah. something? Yeah, no, no, this, this Saturday. Saturday. Boy, this if Saturday. you get a foot of snow, it'll still be a little. I don't know. Make one pass with one of those machines and yeah. it'll have a nice path. That's right. Mm -hmm. We had 16 inches around the last storm. Other week, so in Asheville. She's bad. Yeah, I was going to say, we? No, we. We in Asheville, and so there might be a lot more. We country folks, yes. Yeah. What's that have to do with anything? Well, I'm just saying. Hey, hey she's up. There's it's her turn. It was my turn. Comments, uh, it's a lot more snow out there. It wasn't done. Oh, oh you have more. Okay, go ahead, Jim. Oh, I guess I'm no, done. <laughs> I'm so done. <laughs> anything else, PJ? No. Other than that. Uh, okay, good. MJ? Yeah, two things. Um, you guys are going to repave Hinkley Street, we see. Yes. yes. There's loose oh. talk of that, yes. Oh, yeah. Um, can I go back? Yes. Yeah. It's pertinent. Um, thanks, MJ. There's a meeting uh, at Piker School on Tuesday the 18th. Uh, engineering will be seeking input on the Hinkley Street design. Okay. So for you and other people in Bay State, they're interested in Hinkley Street and what we're doing out there. On okay. the city calendar. So 6 o'clock, Piker School. Okay. Great. Thanks. And the second thing is, do we get refreshed with committee assignments? You know, I was thinking about that and didn't do anything about it, but... Um, That's okay. I just was thinking because we had the conference committee in here the other day that I couldn't make it to. Thank you for covering it. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. um, well... I guess we have to see if the mayor approves some of it first. That's true. That's true. That's right. That's three of us. Who's up for a meal? I, I, I believe that the wheels are in motion. Um, does, would anyone like to be on a different committee? I know you're having a blast on the tree committee. <laughs> um, if there's room for me elsewhere, I'd be more than happy to take it on, but um, I, I think it's important that I stay, of course, on the tree committee if, 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 until somebody else wants to take it over for me. Let's see, we've got the claims committee. Um, joint committee. Joint committee. Are you, are you, I'd I, love I know to you're, on it. yeah? Okay. David, what do you do? You, you come to us. <laughs> <point. laughs> <laughs> no, but, but you, you're often on the construction. He's had a lot of you know, on the private, way, private yeah. ways committee. Network okay. is not uh -huh. It's true, but you, you've been uh, on in and the, the, the volunteer building committee. Right. You've okay. been on the... Uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm, I'm open to <coughs> something. Oh, okay. What's needed? We don't have enough subcommittees. Maybe we need more. No. No. <laughs> I do not think that's right. How about solid waste? Are you... We all appreciate the fact that the two of you have been. Solid. Well, she's Sticking doing joint committee, and I'm doing. Well, we're actually calling it reuse, and actually, I did have stuff to talk about, okay. that, but I don't want to interfere with the talk about that. I just raised the, and I, but I think your point's well taken that we sh should wait and see whether or not we get re up before okay. we do committee assignments. I'll be disappointed if you're not. Okay, so we'll, but that's a great question. Mm -hmm. and <coughs> it crossed my mind the other day. Wow, if we only have public ways, what will we do with all of our extra time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can finally get the work planning the or doing the work that we need to do to get the building this building. Yes, actually, that's mm -hmm. my that's, next thing. That's why I'm here. David, how about you? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. So, I want to report that the Reeves Committee has, again, this third year, um, they're putting out events for the coming year, March 26th. They're collaborating with the uh, Adult Spelling Bee um, or Zero Waste. On the 12th of April, they're doing polypags, uh, styrofoam, textiles, and medical durables. The 26th of April, Spring Community Ag Sale. The 3rd of May, Kids Stuff Exchange. 17th of May, 10th of May, collaboration with the SOS Plant Sale. Um, collaboration on the electronics collection on the 17th of May, and then jumping to October 11th, costume art swap, 15th of November, again, foam, um, paper shredding, and holiday toy exchange, collaborating with the Elks Club, possibly on the speech, I mean, Washington Club, uh, 
um, awesome. use weapons. That'd be great. Yeah. Now, but the issue is, there's two issues here. One is, I don't know what the status is of the recycling coordinator position, so that's one thing, because uh, the, per the current person in that job has really done a great job for organizing things. things to go. She set up a succession plan for the reuse committee, for note taker, facilitator, whatever. So it, it's coming on while she's doing a good job. But then, if we go in a different direction with our um, solid waste funds, I don't know. It's, you know, this may not come under the purview of the responsibility. So that's. I'm, I'm not, we have a meeting tomorrow morning, I'm not going to take that discussion back to them, but it is a concern to me, I mean, I'm to, it's too early to talk about that, but I'm putting out there a couple of different, different, there's issues. So the issues as I see them is like, we're doing all these events, the events are great, but they're for our community to take care of trash in our community, reducing the amount of the landfill, but also to be, um, uh, doing the uh, right, you know, reuse zero waste concept, um, but also it it does take um, a recycling coordinator to manage some of these. So, well, can I say? Uh, oh, go ahead, Jim. I was just going to say that we had traded email a little while ago about the status of the recycling coordinator, and I I had indicated that we were working on job descriptions that included a 35-hour per week position for the, for the, I forget if it was a recycling plan or the, the position, the name of the position has changed, mm -hmm. um, but it was proposed by staff to be a full-time position, 35 hours per week, mm -hmm. and then it's been having discussions with the mayor, I think, and human resources about, about that, but it was the intention to rewrite these job descriptions to reflect the differences in the system. Um, the clerk's time is sort of the division responsibilities has changed since the light bulb. Um, closed, and we wrote two job descriptions to reflect those changes. Mm -hmm. um, and the recycling planner was a proposed to be full time position, but we don't know at this point where that's going to land. Exactly. So <coughs> I, I, I just would like to have some guidance from the board if I can say anything, or just have everything have the both states course until we know more as a group. Simultaneous with this is that there's been a very active group working on the Glendale Road Reuse Center with some ideas and basic renovation needs. Again, if we decide to withdraw somewhat from having um, uh, trash and reuse um, support from the city, from from the Board of Public Works, both, both entities, that reuse center should, should not go forward with that. Unless it can be self-supporting. Right. But without, I mean, yeah. So I'm, I guess I'm just sharing this all with you. I guess I won't share anything tomorrow morning. Um, you, you know, but I'm excited about all the <coughs> events because just in terms of our community and landfill and filling things up, having these events happen is a great reuse, recycle. It's a good community. Um, effort and it's a good zero waste effort. Does do your customers at these events seem to be coming because they were coming to drop off trash, or I mean, do they go to this side of the street then that side of the street, or do you think you'd get a crowd anyway? I think we get a crowd anyway. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, yeah definitely. that would be interesting to think about, just in terms of policy, mm -hmm. is. whether we should be careful not to use things like the cell tower fees. Mm -hmm. it, it's clear the bank program's not generating any kind of a surplus mm -hmm. to contribute to these events. Mm -hmm. And we should be careful, we, it might be interesting to consider being careful not to take all of our available sources of income and use it and prop up the bank thing. If it, I mean, in some ways, well, it's, it's an interesting it is. And I, conversation I, that's why somewhere I say that I want to hear back from the mayor and what. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Can I make another sure. suggestion? Um, this is a kind of event where, because mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with you, I think people are coming to these things who would not go across the street. Mm -hmm. um, charge them a buck. Just 
a buck. Give us a buck. Wouldn't be enough to um, be self-sufficient or anything mm -hmm. like that, but people will give you a buck. There is a charge for the trunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah that one, right. Yeah. But I mean, even when I go to like the swaps, mm -hmm. which I think is awesome, mm -hmm. I call it swaps. They, people call it drop up, but I end up usually taking away more yeah. in the plastics yeah. than than yeah. Yeah. Well, I just think we're sort of on the edge there, philosophically as well as financially, and in no no sense in shutting doors, but no sense in going down roads that are going to be blocked. So, mm. that's all. I've, I've shared a lot, lot with you today. I don't think it's having a too, too much screen. Uh, very exciting, styrofoam band, uh, which has passed in, in Amherst. There's a lot of interest in our city at, at proposing this, just adding to sort of like the youth commission and Ryan uh, So there may be on the, on the horizon and styrofoam band coming in. Um, Melinda Shaw, any of you know Melinda? Mm -hmm. Melinda was the uh, prime mover behind the gay pride parade for years. Mm -hmm. um, she, uh, she has an idea about painting one of the crosswalks with a rainbow. Um, it's the 10th anniversary of the right to marry in Massachusetts, and it's the 8 millionth anniversary of the parade. Um, I told her two things. Um, it's kind of special paint that we use for the crosswalks. It's not just, you know, cans of paint. Um, although that, w that might be one option to do something that would wash away. I suppose. I said there are technical aspects to it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that um, that I would require some thought, and and then there might be um, aesthetic considerations. You know how long? What, what's it going to look like as it fades? It's, it's an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. I told her I would bring it to the board. Um, <clears throat> she was also thinking of talking to Bill Dwight. I said that'd be great. Mm -hmm. You know, this is. You got to get lots of people thinking about this. I don't think it would be <coughs> something that we would decide and then just suddenly spring it on the mayor and the city. Like, oh yeah, yeah, we decided that three months ago. So I think there probably ought to be a conversation. A couple of years ago, Turner Strauss did some special fish painting, mm -hmm. and it's it's still there. It's, it's worn away, but it really seemed to. Be attractive and made it made the downtown crosswalk. Well, Melinda different. said look at, to look online, which I have to confess I haven't done. But she said some of them really look amazing. Mm -hmm. But someone wanted to do geometric designs mm -hmm. inside of our lines mm -hmm. and the line. There's no, they actually the last proposal that came in. They wanted us to go back to our um, perpendicular bars that run the full length of the crosswalk itself, uh -huh. and then paint in between those two bars. Mm -hmm. And we've gone to the what we call the, the ladder. Which right. are the stripes of be two feet on center and different lengths and widths and so on. Mm -hmm. So you could look at painting between those, but I hate to lose our our standard, which is very visible mm -hmm. for pedestrian crossing. Right. I, no, I, there's definitely a technical aspect. To it. So I like the concept. I do too. Yeah. Well, we we've also uh, talked about this before. Mm -hmm. other, our, other artists have brought concepts. Right. I don't think we ever got anywhere. With well, I'll have your people talk to your people. Okay. Okay. Um, that's all I have. Take a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.